I'm the locality manager for Victim Support Glasgow, where we provide support to victims and witnesses uh, who've been victims of crime or witness to a crime. We um, provide emotional support and that ongoing follow-up that people require either before or after court. Lots of involvement for victims and witnesses and as they go through the criminal justice system to the very end when they feel that they can then move on with their lives again. Uh, my name is Rachel Fleming and I work in social work, criminal justice and uh, I have been involved in a piece of work that involves restorative justice. Really, in a nutshell, the case conferencing is a conversation between the person who has been harmed and the person who has committed the harm. So those two people are within a room, but they are also supported by facilitators. And that is essentially about bringing two people together to have a dialogue about what has happened in the aftermath of that. Um, and I suppose the core element is that the victim has a voice. The victim is able to say, this is how it has impacted me. This is how my life has been since. And, and perhaps these are the questions that I've got as well. It allows the person who's perpetrated the harm to not give reasons, but perhaps explain what was happening on the lead up to the offence. Maybe even deal with some of the issues that they have or the emotions that they have, like guilt or, or shame or, or whatever it happens to be. Um, and the, I suppose the main aim is to kind of get a bit more understanding on both sides and at the end of that there's usually a, some sort of action plan um, that will be agreed again by both parties um, and that is usually about you know how can we move forward with this, how can we draw a line under it and how can we make sure that there's not going to be another re-offence um, and also again what can be done to make sure that the person who's been affected by that harm feel better, feel safer. I think a lot of victims uh, would be, want to be involved in restorative justice in some way, um, just to even get that closure um, that a lot of people talk about because they often come away from court and the process hasn't been as straightforward as they hoped. Um, they often say that they're really disappointed at the outcome. Um, they don't understand why maybe it wasn't a custodial sentence uh, and we then explain to them that there's other ways that people can be rehabilitated and now you know that's the kind of better option for some people because it prevents that reoffending. and if that was explained maybe at a bit of a, an earlier time then people would understand a wee bit more but it's that's where it's crucial for us to step in after the trial as well as before uh, because they do still have lots of questions about what's happened in that process at court. Sometimes the only question is why. Um, I think that's the one that people find that keeps them awake at night. Um, why, we, why me? Um, and sometimes there just isn't a straightforward answer to that. Uh, and maybe that's all they need to hear. But then that allows them to get that closure that they, they haven't had before. Going into a case conference, meeting someone who you've either committed a crime against or you have been the victim of that crime is going to um, probably unearth a lot of different emotions, a lot of different thoughts and feelings, a lot of different questions. It's about preparing that person to think, what do I want to say um, and how do I want to say it? You don't want someone going in and regretting what they said or thinking, I didn't say enough. You want someone to feel ready to, to have that meeting. Most people that you speak to have had some form of trauma in their life, whether they're a victim or offender. Um, and you know, in terms of how we support that, um, is thinking about the overall picture. Um, and that's where, if we have their experience of what they've been through, good and bad, <laughs> that teaches us how to make sure that the service we provide going forward is much better in the long run. This work in restorative justice is so important because it's giving people an opportunity to have another dialogue that doesn't usually happen. Being able to have a forum where you can have a safe conversation with somebody um, and we can talk about some sort of resolve, um, some sort of moving forward. That's, that is so precious to generations moving forward and teaching them how to do that. You know, there's some families in, in particular, we have our Support for Families Bereaved by Crime project, uh, where they've lost a loved one through uh, murder. Uh, and that's where you find that some families are looking for answers uh, from the accused about what happened because they don't know what's happened in the lead up to that instant. I've seen that that's worked really well down south in the past. Um, and yeah, the team, I think, are looking to get that to maybe work 
some more uh, in, in Scotland as well. It can reduce reoffending. Now that's not really the aim of restorative justice, but it is a byproduct of, of what can happen. Um, for victims who are partaking in restorative justice, they can find more closure. They can have an opportunity to ask those burning questions. They may get an apology, they may not, but again, a lot of people don't want a sorry because sorry doesn't answer questions. They can reframe um, what's happened in their mind better, that they can have a better perspective on it, that it can reduce um, post-traumatic stress for people. Uh, for perpetrators um, taking part in restorative justice, they have the opportunity to, I guess, face up to, to their actions, what they have done, to be able to offer an apology, um, to be able to process those larger, more difficult emotions like shame and, and regret and disappointment. Um, they get to sort of repay back for the, for the harm that they've, they've committed as well and potentially draw a line under it.